These cheap paper rockets from a different project will cruise over 300 feet, if you got the right equipment to get them airborne. In this project, you'll learn how to convert common sprinkler parts into a powerful and portable handheld rocket launcher. For this project, I based my design on the style of an AK-47 assault rifle. I rounded up these PVC sprinkler parts for about $45 at a local hardware store. To get started, we'll need to measure some 9-inch lengths of 2-inch PVC pipe, and when those are cut, they connect to these reducing adapters. Together, these will act as the pressure chambers that power the rocket launch. I'm placing the parts on my work table in the basic form of the finished rifle, so I can measure custom lengths of 1-inch pipe for the body. I'm happy with the look, so let's cut a 2-foot length of half-inch pipe for the barrel and commit to this design by making it permanent. Purple primer will go on first to clean the connections, and when they're dry, it's time to add the PVC cement. When we make our connections, it's important to use glue on both components and twist them together to make sure we get a great seal. There's going to be a lot of pressure in these chambers, and we don't want to take any chances with a bad connection. Alright, the frame is complete, and now we can focus on adding a pneumatic coupler to this cap. This will allow us to pressurize our system with an air compressor. The pneumatic coupling is added by drilling a hole in the top of the cap and tapping the hole to form threads that will secure the adapter airtight. Next we can drill a hole in the other cap just big enough for a momentary switch. I'll shape the bottom with my belt sander and a rotary tool so that this trigger cap will fit snug on the handle. I'm getting this ready for painting so I'll need to clean off the stickers with some adhesive remover and tape over the parts that I don't want exposed. We still need to attach the trigger before we can paint, and we also need to attach some doorbell wire as well as this poly tubing. These together will join the electrical system to the trigger switch in the cap. To connect them up, we'll have to cut a hole just bigger than the tube, and while we're at it, let's drill a hole in the center of this plug as well, because we're going to need that later. Next, let's strip our doorbell wire so we can connect each wire to the switch. When those are in place and tightened, we can secure the switch on the cap, then pull the wires through the bottom hole. We need to get these wires through the protective tubing, and I found that could be done by sucking a string through the tube first, then attaching the wires to the string. This way, they pull through the tube easily. Alright, the tube is in place, and we can add some hot glue to help keep it there, and now we're ready to attach the trigger to the frame. Hot glue goes on the back, and it presses into place nicely. I'll add just a little more glue to fill in the gaps. Okay, it's time for a paint job, and I think it'll be fun to use a variety of camouflage paints. So I'll hang this up and start attacking it with four different colors. I'm letting each layer dry before adding the next color, and just spraying in random patterns for effect. I'll add a coat of finish, and when it's dry, I think it looks pretty good. The masking tape we use to cover the trigger switch and pneumatic coupling can all be removed, and then thread tape can be added to each of the threaded connector nipples. We need to make sure these are screwed back on fairly tightly, because we don't want any air to leak. Let's add the inline sprinkler valve next, and then screw the barrel onto that. The valve wires get pulled through the 90 degree joint, and the elbow presses nicely onto the solenoid casing. Now it's time to rig up the electrical system. The ends of each wire need to be snipped to size and stripped to expose the bare copper wire. The other side is made ready by pushing the poly tube through the hole in the end plug that we made earlier. Next we need to wire a 9 volt snap connector in series with the valve and the switch, and that can be done by twisting the ends together. I used electrical tape to cover the connections, and it ends up looking like this. Now we can snap our battery in place and add hot glue to hold the tubing inside the plug. When that's cooled, the wire and battery tuck very comfortably up into the casing to shield the battery from the elements. The system is finished! At this point you should have your very own AK-47 style compressed air rocket launcher. I'm really happy with the way it looks and handles. I've even made barrel adapters for shooting paintballs and water balloons, and a valve stem adapter for hooking up a bike pump for anyone who doesn't have an air compressor. A little pose for the camera, and I'm ready to test out one of my 5 cent high pressure paper rockets. Look for the video on how to build those. Alright, all my neighbors are at work, and the streets are clear, so it's time to fire. Whoa, where'd it go? I actually lost sight of it, but after a few minutes of searching, my little boy helped me find it way down the street, almost 300 feet away. That's nearly the length of a football field, and it's still in perfect condition, so let's shoot it again. I'm firing these at 135 PSI, and they're out of sight every time. 
Well, this has far surpassed my expectations. Not only can it launch rockets completely out of sight, but it's portable, customizable, and can be modified to launch paintballs and water balloons hundreds of feet. That's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you'll like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com.